You talk about Zen Arcade, which is probably the most illustrious uh, artifact to date. How important is that in your career? Got a lot of attention. It was, it was real important. It was, it was at a time where a lot of the bands, a lot of the underground bands in America were, were uh, afraid to do anything really radical, you know, it was like being radical was the norm, you know, and it was being very conventional. And, you know, sort of assessing the situation to date, there hadn't been that many double albums by underground bands in, uh, in a good while, so we said, well, we've got a year and a half's worth of songs, why not do a double album? So that was the... Rather than weeding through all that many songs and getting rid of half of them, we decided to because we realized that there was like a link of where the play, where the songs were coming from then. You know, right. The problem is you get spoiled though doing a double album then you never want to do a single album again. Yeah. Well, it's well, over, over the course of two albums to entice the listener to continue listening, have to add a little bit of variety to it. I, I don't know, as far as the screaming goes, yeah, that's, you know, that's part of it, I guess. You know, what I like to consider what we do is, is very spur of the moment, you know, it's not, it's not always concise and it's, not, it's certainly not always planned. I think uh, gigs are definitely different from night to night. It could be the same songs, but it's never even close to the same. You know, it's supposed to be, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a document of what you're doing that day. I think a lot of the people that come to see us expecting us to play Zen Arcade or, or even for that matter, New Day Rising could go away disappointed because that's not what we're doing today right now you know what we're doing right now is, is a lot of new material and just a lot of whatever it happens you know however it comes out so, you know that's the key to the band is constantly changing you know from day to day and assessing all the changes you know seeing which ones are positive and which ones aren't positive it's kind of like being a photographer where it's like you know every day you're shooting some film and like you got some undeveloped roles and you got some unexposed roles and you got some prints. You know? When you're on stage playing together, do you treat your audience as guests or do you treat them as, as observers? We, we treat them, as, I like to treat them as friends until we're betrayed <laughs> and then they're no longer friends and then it's purely for our own enjoyment. This is because you've mentioned already that hardcore laws have become quite severe and quite restrictive. Since we're not a hardcore band, I guess it doesn't apply to us, but I mean, it's... I know what you're saying, yeah. You, but, you must admit, when you... The first album I think we heard of it was um, Land Speed, Land Speed Record. Record. Well, it was very, uh, very aggressive. I guess a lot of people would call that hardcore. Yeah, at that time, possibly we were. That was... Again, that's the point of playing the older material. That's Those songs were written in 1979 before there was such a thing as hardcore. And as hardcore became very popular, we quickly, uh, quickly decided to move on. You know, you know, not at a loss for material by any means. You know, so Can't stand out in the crowd by hanging around with one. I presume you, you uh, believe the music is very powerful. Do you see any equations with these sorts of power? Um, power in, in government, power just in uh, society, in families, okay. that, can, that can be used to influence or manipulate. Well, I think, you know, just basically what we're trying to do is, you know, it's a, it's a, real, it's a real simple concept and, it, and it's tried and true. You have to have both your own feet on the ground before you can start changing things. A lot of the people who look to music for social and political change 
are doing that exactly. They're looking to music to, to, to instigate some kind of change. Whereas what we try to do with music is just deal with more personal things, more day-to-day -day things, simple little paradigms or simple little stories that we tell, you know, to question the listener. And the, you know, and the question is not, you know, to the listener, it's for the listener to, to apply it to himself, to go, what does this song mean? What are they trying to do with this song? You know, what are they talking about? Have I ever been there? And if I was, what did I do or what would I do? You know, it's just as a self-assessment, you know, taking a look at your own, your own shit, you know, before you get into other people's thing. Trying to go. Well, I think you should go out and I think you should change the government and I think this is bad and I think that's bad, but I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Are there any songs in your repertoire yeah, that you feel are particularly effective for making people think this way? I think they're all effective on different levels. It's hard to, it's hard to isolate one one particular song, you know, be it from a record or from a live set or from our you know, repertoire as it were. It's, you know, I think all this, all the songs together try to create a certain effect. You know, like perfect example is "Celebrated Summer." You question all the fun you have, and was it really worthwhile? You know, you, know, you take a look at any other songs. You know, I apologize. What does that mean to you? you know, to me, it means sometimes I'm a real jerk, and saying you're sorry to somebody you care about is the hardest thing in the world to say. It's just learning how to say th certain words, learning how to communicate to people, you know, especially yourself. When you're recording your songs, you record very quickly and on the whole live. Is this purely financial or is it an aesthetic reason behind? It was financial reasons at first. I think, you know, trying to get the immediate feeling down again, it's the, that day, that feeling. Yes. Trying to keep it as intact as possible is good. You know, like, for example, the new album we did took 200 hours to record, the one that'll be out next month. Some songs too. 15 minutes, some songs took 40 hours because they were very intricate and what we were hearing had to be, it took days, you know. Some songs took 20 minutes. So a lot of the other ones fell in between, you know. Record it in one take, do the vocals in maybe an hour. You've produced, I believe, a band called Articles of Faith. How did you get involved in that? Because it is it's far more of a standard hardcore than, than this could do. Well, if you okay, I saw, I had seen the band live a couple times. They really impressed me as having a real gut level thing with the crowd. You know, they're really trying to. You know, they're they're more they were more trying to be in the social change at first. They're a very political band. They started to move away from that, but they were always real good live. It's, it's particularly funny about them to like reinforce what Bob said earlier. I mean, uh, I guess I really should make examples of them, but. It's like here, but we just wanting to change the world through the music was fine, but I mean, they didn't really have their personal shit together. That's really so important these days, you know, with everything that goes on around you. A person is responsible for their own happiness and, you know, whatever that means. And it doesn't, if it means going out and killing people, then, then you're not ever going to be legally happy. <laughs> but I, I just think, you know, instigating people to feel something is much more interesting than instigating people, period. You know, emotions are what make, pe what make you do what you do every day, and it's what makes me do what I do every day. You know, it's, there's ego involved, and there's, you know, the, the pleasure that you derive from pleasing other people and the pleasure you derive from doing a good job at your, you know, at your work or whatever you do. You know, you know, so much, you know, your life revolves around those kind of things. 
you know, if you're not happy with the way things are evolving around you, you know, I mean, it's probably your own fault. Yeah, it's, it's fine. If the bands want to use music as a political forum and they're well informed, that's good. I guess that's why I don't. Because I'm not politically aware. I know I don't want to die in a war. You know, I know government. You know, I know basically in America, government is monkey X and monkey Y. You get to pick which one you want for four years. They don't make any decisions, anyways. You know, it's like the whole the hardcore thing, kind of like. Unitized everybody, put everybody in a uniform again, and it's like took away personal feelings for the sake of a group feeling. Outward uh, like, aggression. For an example, it's like um, anti Reagan is like a really popular thing, right? And uh, when Reagan had his uh, cancer, when his bowel with cancer, it's like. I just happened to flip on the news and there was Reagan like saying, well, here's the way it is. I, I started out, I had this, you know, bump on my nose and I picked at it and it's like, for the next, you know, 10 minutes I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, this man is a fucking human being. And it's like, you know. And, you know, I'm not a pro-Reagan supporter, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's a visible target. You know, it's real easy. You know, it's like ragging on uh, on Thatcher, or ragging on Reagan, or ragging on the, the Soviets, or so that's very, very easy to to pick a target that high up that you can never aim. You, you can aim for it, but you'll never hit it. Uh, again, if people are really into instigating political change like that, they should uh, get their degree, go to university, become a lawyer, try to run for office, and maybe register to, to vote. Even. Register to vote even. You know, become part of the system and then try to change it. You know, being outside the system and trying to make changes, you know what that means. Mm -hmm. It means nothing. It's like we could we could choose to remain like totally underground and like it's like we're on an independent label and we're getting like acceptance across the board beyond the fact that we're underground and it's like if we have this opportunity to popularize our music to not appeal to as large audience as possible but at least expose ourselves to the largest audience as possible well, I don't consider that selling out I'd like to have at least, I'd like to have a chance to show everybody what I do and let them judge it. As opposed to having only a, a certain peer group judge it and deem it, deem it acceptable. You know, I mean, it's much nicer to be rejected by millions than to be accepted by hundreds. <laughs> Certainly in this country you haven't really had to suffer any rejection at all so far. Uh, on the whole for the last 18 months or so, you've really had nothing but good press. Have you suffered the opposite in the States? No, we get good press over there because, one, we always talk to the press and we'll answer pretty much any question people have. You know, we don't hide away and, and create a mysterious aura around the band. You know, we would rather be understood than misinterpreted. You know, secondly, I don't think we've done anything that warrants bad press to be, uh, to be self-centered for a moment. <laughs> I think we put out some pretty good records. I think better than the better than most. I think this band contains some better than good musicians. Yeah, we really work hard at what we do. This is all we do. You know, I mean, we do take it very seriously. We wouldn't be the same three people for six and a half years if there wasn't a reason to keep going. You know, it's certainly not money. You know, I can make a lot of money doing a lot more money doing other things. But I'm happy doing this, so once I cease to be happy, then I'll get out of it.
And that was uh, Huskadoo. 